Hey, what is up everyone? It's time for a new video and, and because the Freenas 2 Arch Switch video is so incredibly popular, I thought I'd do a little follow-up video where I talk about the stuff that I changed on Arch, how I refined the setup, uh, what, what did I install, what did I change. There's not a lot I've changed, but some, uh, some really cool stuff I did change. I will show you all of that. And also at the end I will do an upgrade of the kernel and the ZFS tools and we can go through all of this and see if there occur any problems or if it uh, upgrades smoothly without problems and yeah, I hope this will be an interesting video, but uh, let's go ahead. So the first thing I want to show you is the changes I made to the auto snapshot feature that SSH into the machine. Previously I used cron to schedule the snapshots, but as you can see that's not the case anymore. So um, what I did instead is I used systemd timers and these timers, uh, for example the hourly timer is already installed with the ZFS auto snapshot um, package. They are not activated but you can simply activate them with system control enable um, the hourly snapshot dot timer instead of dot service. You can list all the timers you have active with list timers and then you get this nice list where um, all the timers are in here. For example, here's the daily um, timer for the snapshot. Um, it passed 12 hours ago, it will run again at 11 hours. And uh, there's also the weekly timer. And the main benefit of using systemd timers instead of cron is there is this option called persistent, which means uh, if the system is powered down, for example, over the night and you turn it back on, the daily snapshot will run even though it was off at the time it should have run. So it, it will remember to do the job even when it was powered off before. I'm, I'm sure this, you can do something like this with Cron 2 but um, this is a really nice and easy option and I like that. Now the next step I want to do is to do this for all of the other things I have in Cron. I want to do a timer for the backup of my photos. Um, and also the scrub. So um, uh, if I have the system power down it will remember to do the backup and the scrub. Because I don't have the system powered on all the time because I don't need it every every day. But uh, yeah it's, it's nice to know that the backups and the scrubs and everything will still run. Let's go ahead and create timers, timers for that. And the cool thing is you can uh, also do stuff like this. For example, uh, you can create a timer which runs 15 minutes after it's after the system boots up and then also every week uh, and stuff like this. You can do really cool stuff with the timers. So let's create a new service. Let's call it photos backup that service. And we don't have to put a lot in there. Uh, we need the unit part. We add a description. Um, and uh, let's put in the backup of her. And then we need a service part and with exec, execute start uh, we can define what should be executed when the service is started. So let's go ahead and, um, and uh, let's copy the command I'm using here. I'm just, it's just a super simple r uh, rsync command. And uh, that should be it. Let's save it. Let's see what happens if we start the server. So the system control start. And let's start this photos backup service. Okay, so that failed. Let's see what happened. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, what we need to do is we need to specify the whole path for our rsync. Uh, which should be just on the bin folder. Oh no, it's in USR bin. Uh, okay. Okay, but now we should be able to start a service. And all it's doing is now um, running the rsync. Yeah, so as you can see, it's currently running. I can hear the drive spinning up. Yeah, and we get a nice system, uh, and a nice message here. Started backup of the photos folder, so that's nice. But now let's let's do the timer for that also. So let's create a file photos backup timer. 
the cron job we can see I've run this command every Wednesday, but I will just do a weekly timer for this now. So, uh, so this is everything we need. I'm just copying it in here. So now we can modify it. So this is the weekly photos backup timer. Uh, we want to run it weekly and it should be persistent. Okay, so that's all. Let's save it. And let's uh, enable this timer. Um, photos backup the timer. Let's list the timers again. Um, and we should... Oh, I forgot we also have to start the timers. So uh, it's five days left till it runs. Did never run yet. That seems correct. That's nice. Now, as you can see, we have these timers which are running at the same time. Uh, one is a backup and one is a snapshot. That's not really good. So what we do instead is um, let's edit the timer again. And we're changing on calendar from weekly to Wednesday. And this means any month, any day, just every Wednesday. So let's see what, what the timer is listing now. We have the photos backup timer, which will run in 11 hours Wednesday. So that's nice. Now this is running every Wednesday. Okay, so we can uh, go into the cron tab here. So we can delete that line. And now we only have to do the scrub. Um, timer and service. I'm doing separate services and timers for both of my pools just because if I want to run them at different times or something in the future I can do that. So let's go ahead and make it first for the backup. Unit description is a pool. Um, service is set pool scrub backup. Okay, let's do the same for my other pool, the storage pool, scrub storage, and in the description, storage pool. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the timer for that. ZFS storage pool scrub timer. And I want to run this timer on the 1st and the 15th and every month and every year at 1 o'clock. So let's enable this timer, start this timer. I found my error. That was stupid. <laughs> Oh, the enable that did work, <coughs> but seems like the start didn't work. Oh, we have to load the service first. So let's try with sudo system control daemon reload first. But it still cannot be started. Oh, same error again. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to use absolute pass again. So now it should be able to start. Nice, okay. So let's do this for the backup also. So that's now the backup pool scrub timer at the same time. Um, because uh, that's fine because the pools are on different hard disks, so uh, they don't get in the way of each other. So let's enable the ZFS scrub backup timer and start the timer. Now let's do a list timer again. Okay, so we have for the backup scrub one week and two days left and for the storage scrub one week and two days left also. So that's nice. Now we have the weekly snapshot, the daily snapshot, the photos backup and the uh, scrub um, the scrubs in here i also like this list timers feature a lot where you can see exactly when um, when the timers will run again so that's nice and uh, we can go ahead and um, remove all the cron features so so the cron tab is now empty so that's the first thing i wanted to show you um, it's it's great with the system D timers because you have this nice overview and you have the persistent mode, which is really nice if you don't have the system running all the time. Now the next thing I want to show you is about MB the media server. I tried an upgrade of the Linux kernel and the set of S tools before, and then um, the pools didn't mount automatically after reboot again, and uh, this is a 
which is also documented in GitHub. What happened with MB then is MB started at the boot, didn't find all my media because the pools weren't mounted automatically. And then MB decided, oh, all the media is gone, so I can remove also all the metadata I've uh, put, put into the system. So after I downgraded to the older Linux kernel and the older ZFS tools, which were working fine, and I started MB again, MB um, scanned all my files new again and it forgot all the metadata. So uh, I had to go through all of the me uh, of the media that was recognized wrongly again and ad identify all the media again. Uh, I'm still not finished with that because it's such a boring job. So that was really annoying that MB forgot all of the metadata for my movies and stuff just because it couldn't find the media files one time. So there's a solution for that and the solution is you have to go to the settings to metadata and then there's this option save artwork and metadata into media uh, into media folders. So if you enable this option um, and then let me go into my movies folder here you have the info of all of the metadata right next to your movies. So if anything goes wrong with MB again, you still have the correct metadata stay saved right next to your movie files. This looks not very nice, but um, it does the trick in saving you a lot of work. So this feature is really good. If you enable this after you've imported all of your media, you have to go to the metadata manager and for each section you have to do a refresh so it saves and then it saves all of the of the information right next to your files that's all i did change in mb otherwise it's running great okay so the third thing is i also use my hp micro server to to compress my videos for youtube it takes a whole lot longer than on the laptop but um, i don't care i can use my laptop and pick it up and go somewhere with it and the server does does it jobs and I don't care if it takes two or three times longer because it's just running in the background and, and for that I use handbrake and uh, there's a problem with handbrake because I use AAC audio uh, handbrake has removed one decoder in their latest version because of some license issues and the decoder which is now shipped with handbrake has a terrible audio quality and uh, it's pra it's practically unusable so what I had to do is downgrade handbrake uh, to version 10.3 or 0.10.3 um, which still has the codec, the, the decoder. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I'm always talking of decoders but uh, of course I mean encoders. Um, so the encoder that was removed is FDK AAC. So this is from the Fraunhofer which also invented MP3. So this is the encoder that sounds good. A lib AV um, just sounded terrible for me. I couldn't use it. On, on Linux you're only stuck with this one now. And under OS X you, you're not. That's why I can use the latest version um, under OS X because it uses core audio from the system which also gives you a great audio quality. So, um, But for Linux it's or, or Windows, I'm not sure. I, think Windows 2, it's better to, to stick to, with this codec because it so, sounds so much better than the, the first one. Yeah, that's why I downgraded Handbrake. For that I, I, I got to the, to the Arch package archive and uh, got the package from there, then it installed it with Pacman and then in the Pacman uh, configuration file I added ignore package Handbrake CLI which does not get upgraded anymore now. So I'm using the older version with the nice encoder. If I'm actually encoding something, I have this whole thing running in Tmux and then I can just uh, disconnect SSH and everything keeps running and yeah, this is, these are the settings I'm using for YouTube. So uh, here you can see the codec for AC audio and uh, yeah, that's that. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is um, VNC because I also use the server to upload my videos and uh, for that I tried a YouTube uploader for 
for command line. Uh, I tried to, to get it running three or four times with uploading my, my first FreeNAS video, but I couldn't get it working and it always crashed at the end when everything was uploaded, which takes quite a few hours at my place. What I did then is install XFCE and uh, Chromium and uh, a VNC server. The VNC server is starting when I log in it to SSH the first time after boot up and then it just keeps running. I'm using Tiger VNC for that and I can show you why. Um, connect here. Um, the great thing about Tiger VNC is um, stuff like resizing uh, works just out of the box perfectly or uh, copy paste uh, of the clipboard is uh, working really fine so that's really nice and I just followed here the, the arch wiki guide as always to set everything up there's also described how to how to do the startup automatically when you first log into SSH and then and then also to keep the server running even if you disconnect from SSH so yeah then I'm using chromium to upload my YouTube videos from here uh, from here so um, that's working perfectly so far and I'm fine with that solution the CLI version would be much cooler I think but um, yeah it's okay using chromium with VNC now let's do the second part um, the upgrade of the system so let me run sudo pacman slash u and as you can see it's ignoring handbrake as I talked about um, then there's a whole lot to upgrade chromium it's also a new version of the kernel also the ZFS Linux so let's go to the github repository see the commits and uh, this is the kernel uh, this is the version that we want to update to so the packages are up to date that's good so we should be able to to successfully update to the newest kernel um, but there's this issue open here where the pools weren't mounted automatically after the boot, after the upgrade. But uh, some people figured out how to how to get it working again. So we will just try that out and see what happens. So yes, we want to do the upgrade. Okay, so that's done. Now I told you about my problems with MB. So just to my, uh, to be sure, I'm going to disable disable mb mb the mb server for the next boot so it doesn't get messed up so let's do a reboot and see what happens okay so these are all the services that are that should be enabled the servers back up and running so let's see um, first do the set pool status yeah, and there are no ports available. So let's see. Um, first this one, the import cache service. sudo systemctl status inactive. This one should be enabled. So. so the next one is the mount service. Then the share service. Then the set service and then ZFS target. Okay, this one was enabled, it seems like. So, and what I did I, uh, is now uh, thanks to Forerun, um, he found out that in his system these services weren't enabled. You can find them in the 50 slash ZFS preset file in the ZFS repository. And uh, yeah, he enabled these services and after reboot, um, everything was working again. So let's, let's try that. Okay, so the system is back up. Let's go into it and have a look. Set pool status. Ooh, and the drives are back, so that's really nice. The upgrade did work. We are running the latest kernel. The set of S pools are there. That seems pretty good. It seems nice. So this was my little follow-up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope 
it was a little bit helpful. Yeah, I, re I really like the system now. Everything is now pretty finally set up how I liked. It's been really stable, so I'm, I'm glad I did the switch. I like it uh, more than Freenas, definitely. It's, it's faster. The boot up alone uh, took nearly three minutes on Freenas. And now it's like one and a half minutes with, with Arch from the start with the BIOS and, BIOS and everything. It's a crazy, crazy improvement there. And the system overall just feels a lot more like my own system. And uh, I didn't have that feeling with Freenas because now it's tailored perfectly to my needs. If so, if you're still thinking about using Arch Linux on, on your NAS or on your little server, I definitely can recommend it. It's it's an awesome operating system. It's an awesome distro. Uh, with up, Just be careful with updating because uh, you always get the latest packages. Have a look in the net before, um, before upgrading whether something important breaks. Uh, with, for example, the ZFS packages. Um, I always have a look before I upgrade anything like that uh, to check uh, whether everything is going to be okay. Yeah, and as always, if you liked the video, uh, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment down below and uh, give me some feedback and uh, maybe yeah, also questions you want to ask. Feel free to comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.